So, uh, hi guys, I'm Anup Thomas Matthew, as she said, and uh, so I, I, I was working through the uh, presentation and then later I realized that, okay, so a better way to actually name the session would be to put it as a data-driven code 101 rather than the hacker's guide to neural networks. So it, it's basically going to, uh, basically not going to uh, cover any recent developments in the United States of America and also, uh, which is uh, like other things which are related are like, uh, we are not going to cover any deep neural networks or deep learning or uh, convoluted, new convoluted neural networks or anything like that. Uh, any advanced to topics in neural networks is not going, going to be covered. We are going to be, what we are going to cover is some very basic concepts which you need to understand if you are going to start work with, uh, starting to work with uh, neural networks, like parameter optimization, entropy, uh, some little bit of maths. So I'm, I'm uh, promising you I, I, there is only just two uh, equations inside the whole presentation, so bear with me for that. And uh, I'll try, uh, we'll try to create a two-layer neural network inside, and then how can you actually learn further. So uh, without further ado, adieu, uh, let me just go uh, into it. So basically, um, first concept I want you guys to actually understand is about parameter optimization. So uh, what is uh, parameter optimization? I'll, I'll tell you a story. So it's about the infinite monkey theorem. It says if you uh, take a typewriter and put a monkey in front of it uh, for an infinite amount of time, that monkey will be able to uh, write the whole Shakespeare uh, Shakespeare on uh, the Hamlet, which is written by Shakespeare, sometime. Because like it's going for an infinite time, uh, somehow this monkey will be able to create that. But um, the, f as a fact, we are programmers and we should be minimizing the uh, time, this infinity to a finite amount so that we can generate something interesting. So that's where this parameter optimization comes in. So if you look at the second, the, uh, second uh, uh, image, it says uh, you can see the blue uh, dot, which is not at the minimum, as in like, uh, so basically what parameter optimization does is to, create, to make the entire, the value of that particular function, whatever it is, to the minimum, to the least value. So, uh, if you can look, uh, that blue one is not actually at the uh, bottom of it. So the bottom is called like global cost minimum. So we have to actually move the entire function to the least value. For that, we have to find the value. So for example, if we take the uh, uh, polynomial ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to zero, we don't know the value of b, a, b, c, and d, but we, ha we can actually adjust it in such a way that uh, the global cost is the minimum. So the idea is that we, are go, we, we should create something which uh, parameter uh, optimize uh, the whole problem. So whichever is that problem. Second concept I want uh, to share with you guys is about entropy. So if you look at a whole, um, let's say um, an XOR gate truth table, it has got two, uh, a two-valued two XOR gate. Z, uh, let's say zero, zero, it has got four states and maximum of four and not more. So um, it is actually limited, the, the, it is actually a dense metric, dense, um, it is dense in information, so there is very less room for error or some kind of a noise. So uh, if you look at it, we have like, let's consider we have two data bits and some kind of a noise bit. If we actually expand that particular uh, data, set, data into eight bits, then there is 256 possible options instead of four. So, so that means we can divide this entire space of 256 into 64, 64, and 64, 64. So there are 64 possible uh, options for this particular data set, uh, data, uh, two bit, data bits to be, which gives a lot of room for this noise to be in. So uh, that gives us uh, the ability to attenuate noise. Uh, it generalizes the data, and then um, each of these uh, bits, 
uh, would represent some kind of a feature, as in uh, if zero, one, one bit would be representing, uh, maybe 10 bits would be representing um, a zero and a one in the result, something like that. So uh, this is like a common uh, image which we use for uh, uh, representing neural networks. But uh, what I want you guys to just stare, uh, like look detail is at the back propagation. So back propagation is nothing but a negative feedback loop. It's a feedback, so if you, if you have uh, learned a little bit of uh, control systems, it basically means that we have some kind of an out, uh, input and we have an output and it's a little off, as in the, res the output is not right. So what we have to do is just subtract the uh, output from the input and then feed that error back to the input saying that, okay, see, you have gone a little off in the value, please correct it. So basically the back propagation algorithm just does that. Calculates the delta, gives it back to the input, and then recalculate whatever the processing it uh, does. Next, pro uh, last, uh, last uh, concept I want to discuss is, uh, so basically, sorry, if you look at it, the hidden layer actually uh, groups uh, these five inputs together into a single neuron. Basically what it does is, it does a matrix multiplication, a simple bit matrix multiplica multiplication each of those W1, W2, W3, W4 are the weight of, in, uh, that means a multiplicand with which the input is uh, connected to the hidden network. And X1 and X2 is the inputs. So basically what, what it does is uh, we have two inputs and four hidden layers, uh, four hidden nodes. It actually conveys that inside. So, um, then comes uh, some, uh, b basically, let me go back a bit. So uh, what happens is there is a transfer function, which is like a, um, a com combinator, something like that, which combines all of this five together using this matrix, matrix multiplication and then does this pro process on top of it to have a generalization. and. For the easiness sake, we are just using sigmoid function, which is like one by one plus e raised to minus x, which, some, which works something like that particular curve, I mean, exactly like that particular curve, which is like a gradation between um, z minus one to plus one. So what it does is it's a, um, uh, if the value, uh, it, it uh, limits the entire um, uh, problem space in between minus one and plus one, so that like, there is like a ra range in which it can work on. So it's like a mapper which maps the entire thing into a sigmoid function. So uh, uh, going further, so we have discussed uh, eight different uh, ideas, and we are going to uh, take everything together. One is about the activation function, which uh, I told about the sigmoid, which is basically combining the inputs into an internal representation. And then there are the layers. So when you actually look into any uh, tutorial which talks about neural networks, it'll right away start saying that, okay, it is like a internal, it's like a computer representation of brain. It's not, it's basically matrices and matrices which are basically uh, combined together or multiplied together. So uh, an activation uh, function is actually something which uh, converts it into an internal representation. And then each of the layers would be a separate weight matrix. Weight is, uh, like if you remember, uh, I've talked about the weight with which each of the input is being multiplied. And then uh, a network is like a collection of layers, like we have layer one, layer two, layer three, or something like that. So we have multiple layers. And then uh, we have uh, the data set, which is the input and the expected output. So we just feed this particular data into this particular uh, weight matrices, which we have defined, and then ask it to actually predict. So basically, it's uh, like um, the input to the neural networks. Then uh, comes the features, which are like the patterns. So for example, to just give an, get an idea, 
think about a line or a curve which is inside a image. Each, uh, an image will have like thousands of lines inside it and each of those lines will have a particular pattern. It's like a dark area on one side and li a light area on one side. So it's like a pattern and then you have to generalize it on top of the whole image. Uh, then we have talked about the sparse encoding. It's like, so we have just, so instead of being very dense about the information, like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, we say, okay, so we are, you have a room of like 64 separate states in which you can be. So um, you can have a lot of error, but still we can figure out, okay, so this is what it means. So let's uh, consider an example of different people with different faces, but everybody have got eyes, nose, and mouth, uh, most of the, uh, everybody. So uh, we can just generalize that into like a general set of features or patterns in that particular data set of images of people. Uh, then comes the back propagation, as I said, it's like learning from the past mistakes. So we, back, uh, we uh, find what is the delta between the input and the output, and then say, okay, see, you have messed up here. Please correct it like this. So it's just basically sending back whatever is like the delta. And then uh, the last one is about the uh, parameter optimization we talked about. It's, um, um, it's a, about finding the right and correct value for the weight matrix to predict the input Right, uh, in the right way. So um, enough talking, I think I am not a good talker at all. So what I'll do is we'll just move into some code and then learn uh, how to actually implement it in a real life scenario. So um, if you uh, remember that I've changed this, uh, the name of the session into like data-driven code because uh, neural networks on its own, it's like the code is very small, but the data is what does the magic. So uh, in the particular example I'm going to show you guys, what we are going to do is make the uh, computer understand or like learn the truth table for XOR gate, which, uh, which looks something like this. So if the first input and the second input is zero, it outputs a zero, uh, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it does the same thing as uh, shown. So uh, what we will do is we'll just quickly Uh, go ahead, and then, so um, how many of you have uh, used NumPy? Yeah, that's interesting. So basically, uh, it seems like most of you guys have the basics, which I have already talked about, because uh, NumPy is like a, um, NumPy is like a, uh, a num numerical processing library in Python. And uh, you, you, uh, if you have used it, mostly you might have worked uh, something about like numeric processing or something. So basically what, I'm, what we are trying to do is import um, four different functions, uh, array, random, and, uh, oh, oh, sorry. So uh, uh, we'll just import this. So for those who uh, haven't used uh, NumPy, uh, I'll just give you uh, give an example. Three. Okay. Now. Star. Sorry. Okay. So basically, what, what it does is, okay. if you look at it, 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 it multiplies the whole array. So um, that's where the multi matrix multiplication part comes in. So if you guys want to actually walk through uh, the code, you can just go through this one, which is like, uh, and let's, uh, let's define the input. and the output, which is like the first uh, input is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 
which is like uh, the uh, four possible states of an XOR. And the output is, if it is a 0, 0, then the output is 0. If it is a 0, 1, it, the output is 1, basically like that. So we are just defining that. We are saying that, OK, this is how the input and output looks like. And now we'll just define the learn function. I'll just copy and paste for the ease of it. OK, so now we have defined the learn function. So I'll just walk you through. Uh, we'll just pass uh, the input, which is like this particular array here, and the uh, output, which is like this particular array here. Uh, and then we'll ask the um, function to um, create two uh, random um, uh, random matrices. One is for the input uh, input layer, and the second one is for the output layer. So, for uh, if you look at it, uh, it it takes uh, x dot shape of one, which is like uh, the shape will give you. 4, 4,2, which is like the uh, dimensions of that particular array. And uh, shape of 1 will give 2. That means that particular array, which is going to be created, the matrix would be 2 by 16. That means we have 16 hidden layers and two input layers. And in the second, second uh, layer, or the second matrix, we have 16 uh, by 1, which is like we have internally 16 hidden layers, and then it uh, converges into a single output. Now, um, in this particular line, uh, we are just training this particular um, f particular uh, model over 10,000 times. And this is basically finding the sigmoid of um, this particular uh, data. It's like one, uh, uh, if you look at the code, so it's the same particular function. This function is actually implemented here. So th this is for the layer one. So uh, it, it operates on the whole um, data set. And then this is for the second layer. It does the same thing for the second layer aggregates everything, and then creates a new value. And then, in this particular line, if you look at it, it, create, it finds the delta. So we, ha we are expecting y. That means we are expecting 0 if we are getting an input of 0 and uh, 0, 0. But if the uh, neural network predicts that it's 0 0.125, then uh, the delta is po minus 0 0.125. And then we move, uh, we send that particular delta back to the weights and say that, see, you have messed up a little bit. It's uh, minus 0.125 and not the other way around. So this particular data is actually fed back into the info, uh, input and say, uh, and say, OK, so next time when you do it, this is what you uh, did wrong. So when you get new data, make sure that you are considering this as well. So we do the same thing over and over for the first layer and second layer. And then iterate through the entire thing for 10,000 times. And once we do this for 10,000 times, the entire network will learn that, OK, so if I get 0 and 0, I'm supposed to say something near to 0, and that will make the user happy. And if you input 0 and 1, then uh, the user is expecting something near to 1 and not 0. So the network will start learning by itself. So what I'll uh, do right now is to actually teach this uh, particular model, basically the networks. And this is how an XOR, um, uh, how an XOR weight matrix looks like. So these are like the hidden uh, values. Uh, so as like uh, encoded into internal values, like into in, when we have two inputs and when, when we have 16 uh, internal states, we'll just spread this particular two states into like six, 16 uh, separate different entities, and there is more room for noise. And then we compress that back using this 16 by 1 matrix, which is like the hidden matrix inside. 
Now we'll, we'll just try with one simple, uh, we'll just define the predict function, which does the same thing as in the, these two things, uh, these two lines. So just. So, um, so this particular uh, model predicted that if it is a zero, a one and a zero as input, these particular weights says that if you pass this particular one and zero through me uh, towards end as a result, what I get is 0 0.987, which is very close to one. So um, it, it, I'll, I'll just uh, make sure that it works and just try one, one which says something very close to zero, which, say, uh, which is not exactly zero, but something very close. So, uh, I, I'll just uh, run through the whole thing and then see what it says for the whole uh, set. It says, uh, if it is a zero, zero, I'm pretty sure it's like 0.01, uh, which is near to zero. If it is zero one, it is like 0.98. So basically, it just predicts that way. So this is how uh, neural networks really works internally. And now we have created with this particular code, we have created uh, we have created the internal representation for two separate uh, layers. And now what is a deep learning thing do? It's basically, we have two layers. What if we have 10 layers inside? That's what a deep, a deep neural network does. We have two, in this particular example, this simple example of like 28 lines, we had, uh, we had two layers. Now we can have like multiple, n number of uh, layers hidden inside which can abstract the values which we give in the input and say, uh, and find even finer information. So for example, look at this particular image where um, each of the image, um, it is actually segmented into small, small groups and, uh, and the computer or like the neural networks will identify each and every small piece as a separate object. So each of them are like separate, separate features or inside the um, hidden layers. And one particular neuron or like a set of neurons would be responsible uh, for finding maybe a person or a face or a helmet. So like that particular set of, when, the, when there is a helmet in that particular image, this set of neurons will activate and say, see, I, I see a helmet in this particular image. So something like that. That's how actually the deep learning works. So uh, this is another example I found where uh, neural networks, like as I said, deep, like we have multiple layers of, um, multiple layers of uh, neurons or like multiple layers of weight matrices, which uh, set, sets of neurons or single neurons can actually identify a face or a cat, like for, as you can see, one of those nodes can actually identify a face, the other one can identify a cat, something like that. Um, so um, to just uh, wrap up, like it was like a very quick introduction. I am pretty sure most of you guys might have already uh, like gone through all these things. So if you haven't, hope it was useful. And now from here, like, um, uh, on a previous session, uh, one of the uh, presenters actually showed this particular example. This uh, playground.tensorflow.com. Uh, it's actually an interesting uh, example uh, uh, where we can actually predict, let's say. So we have got a data set of like this, and then we have to separate the orange from the blue. What we can do is like we can create some deep networks, which it's not needed in this particular case anyway, but we can actually ask it to actually learn. So over time it just learned that, okay, so the blue ones are in this side and that side and the 
uh, orange ones are in the middle. So you, th this is like a very cool tool where you can actually start learning. So um, I would uh, suggest you guys to actually go ahead and look at, uh, have a look at it. Another one is uh, the Chris Kriskrifidis uh, awesome deep learning list. It's like a huge list of uh, tutorials and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of useful links available in the internet. So like so, um, just go ahead and uh, learn further. So uh, I have uh, shared the code slides and uh, a medium post which explains things a little bit, little bit better than what I how I ex explained. So please go through that, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it. I don't want to actually. Uh, uh, go much into other stuff. So uh, I'm open open for questions because I'm pretty sure. <laughs> hey guys, I have questions. Okay, so does anyone have a question? Uh, I'm very new to this topic, so I'm, I'm trying to learn some stuff while I'm here this sure, week. Sure, so you are one of the target audience of yeah. this particular oh, presentation. Oh, it's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So um, my question is, uh, you showed the two-layer and you were, you were implementing XOR. Yeah. Um, it, it had the, you know, uh, truthy 0.9 and the falsy 0 point whatever. Yeah. Um, is it possible with enough layers to have that result in the zero and one uh, uh, result, or, or would you always have to write some wrapper that interprets the results through a, a filter of some kind? So, uh, the, in this particular case, I have run it till like 10 million, but it never converges to one. It goes like 0 0.9999999 and not to one, because it's, it's not always like sure that this is one or zero. But there are a lot of new techniques which will allow all these things to happen. So these are like the very basic techniques. Like these are like the basic things you need to know to get started. So like the new network, new uh, algorithms, are really smart ones, which uh, they can actually do a lot of, lot more than this. Yeah. Um, so my question is the more, if I understand it correctly, um, neural networks, the more you abstract, um, the more accurate they become. Um, if you were to abstract this uh, more and create more and more layers, would the error not also increase? I, I didn't get that. Um, so although you, um, it might get closer and closer to nine, yeah. wouldn't you get larger and larger errors? Yeah, so uh, th th that is true, that is true. So that's when uh, we just, cut down all the possible options. That's where this parameter, sorry, just a second. That, that's where this parameter optimization part comes in. So like you have n different ways to actually go across this entire set. So you have to optimize yourself to say, okay, out of n, I just want to try maybe five or 10 steps, different types, and then see uh, which one reduces the error. So basically, we are running on top of this particular data set where we know that, okay, so this is the right way to do it. And then when we have more error, we'll just, so I, I, I can show you that here. So if, oh, sorry. So if you look at here, it says the test error, uh, uh, test loss and test, okay. Test loss and training loss. So if you look at it, it starts at 500, uh, 0.5 something and then it reduces. So over time, it's, we are actually teaching it that, so you are doing it wrong each time when, they, when it predicts wrong. So like as it goes further, as you said, we will have more error, but these errors are actually pruned down, saying that, see, this is not the right way to do it. This is not the right way to do it. Just go this way, like that. Is that clear? Okay, so we have time for one more question. Can you go through how to write a sigmoid function using the math library? I didn't get that. Can you go through how to write a sigmoid function using the math library? 
sigmoid. So you, you can just use this particular function, right? This one. This is how a, a sigmoid would look like. Is it good? Yeah. Any questions? Uh, so uh, you can just have a look at the post and the uh, slides online. Thank you.